Hello, friends. Welcome back. Romans chapter 8 today in our copy of the Word of God. In verse number 9, I, I, I can't remember a more rich passage of Scripture to talk about than where we are right now. I mean, Romans chapter 8 is just a spiritual, encouraging boost to anybody that reads it. We're learning that there's no condemnation. What a great truth for us to just chew on. No condemnation now that we're saved. We never have to worry about the wrath of God. Now, God disciplines us. He's a loving Father, and certainly we ought to be respectful and and even fearful in that sense of the Lord, but wow, no condemnation. And then I love the bookend of Romans chapter 8, because there's no condemnation. That's the beginning of the chapter. But then the end of the chapter, no separation. Well, what can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Nothing can, because we have it in our Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll, we'll get there. But for today, we're in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 9. We ended last episode saying that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So verse number nine, but ye are not in the flesh. So Paul made that statement, but he said, but I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about you. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. So what makes a person spiritual? We like to throw out that, that word spiritual, I think, too loosely. What, what, what does spiritual, the term spiritual mean technically? But the the term spiritual technically means we have been born of the Spirit. So the spiritual man is the one that has received Jesus Christ as his Savior. A really good study on this topic would be 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the latter part of that chapter, where Paul makes the distinction between the spiritual man and the natural man. So when you trusted Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit of God came into your life to indwell you, the earnest of the Spirit, like the down payment of salvation. So that when the Bible when, when the Bible teaches that you trusted Christ as Savior, the Spirit of God came in as an earnest of that inheritance. That's the term I was looking for. And so in that sense, you are spiritual. Why? You have been born of the Spirit. The Spirit has been quickened. It has been made alive. You now have the capacity to communicate with, to interact with God. That's what a great thought that is. So here in verse number nine, you're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he has none of his. He doesn't belong to God. So what is the criterion that the Apostle Paul here is zeroing in on to demonstrate whether or not a person has truly been saved? Well, I think it's probably instructive for us to say, what does Paul not say? He doesn't say, Well, if you are a Baptist, or if you, I happen to be a Baptist, if you are a churchgoer, if you have been baptized, if you have done X number of good works, if you have, no, no. The the if here is if you have the Spirit of God, then you're God's, you're spiritual, you belong to God. If you don't have the Spirit of God, makes no difference how religious you are, how faithful you happen to be to church or what other people think about you, you don't belong to him. So what is the indicator of salvation? The spirits dwelling in us. Now, how do we know that the spirit is dwelling in us? Well, what the Bible teaches is that if the spirit dwells within you, you know. Because the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Look at verse number hmm, where are we? Wow. Verse number Yeah, nine again. Wow. I'm having a little bit of a senile moment there. I am gonna be fifty eight this year, so that there there you go. 
If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. But watch this, verse 10. And if Christ be in you, how is Christ in us? Well, Christ isn't in us physically. We know that. But he's in us via his Spirit. So if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of, uh, of, of, of sin. So we already talked about this. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. So there's the dichotomy again. Why? Because we died with him. So if Christ is with us, then we, we have participated in his death. I am crucified with Christ, Paul said. Nevertheless, I live. So there's the dichotomy. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. There's the spirit of Christ, the life in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. See, the flesh is still here. I still lug around this body right? But the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. There's the new life. There's the Christ life uh, who liveth in me. Uh, And I'm not quoting that correctly, but you know what I'm saying. Look at verse number uh, 11, uh, verse number, yes, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, do you see how the Trinity is talked about in Romans chapter 8. So sometimes we talk about the Holy Spirit as the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. But sometimes we talk about the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of Christ. Or sometimes we talk about the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of God. So which is it? Is it the Holy Spirit as a separate entity? Is it the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of God, as the Spirit of Christ? And the answer is yes, because there is the uni plurality of the Trinity, one God. So we can correctly say the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, and we could correctly say the Spirit of the Father, the Spirit of the Son, and that be the Spirit and the Son, and yet one and yet both, and yet one and yet three. You say, I don't understand that. I don't know that any one of us entirely understands that. But the point is, if we had a God whom we could entirely understand, like we can look in a microscope at a Petri dish and, 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 and be able to be outside of an organism, understand everything about it, then, then God wouldn't be God. We would be God. We, you can't get on the outside of God and understand all about him. Why? Because God is the limitless one. We are the limited people. He is the omniscient one. We are the limited knowledge people. He is the omnipotent one. We are the limited, powerful people. And so when we see that we are the temporal ones, he is the eternal one. So as we talk about some of these concepts and say, well, explain that, I'll do the best I can, but we're not going to entirely understand all of who God is. It's beyond us. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are beyond our ability to comprehend them. We could start talking about the dimensions of God. Most of us can't even think outside of three dimensions, let alone four and five and a million and all of what God is. And wow. So back to verse number 11. So if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Did you hear what the Bible just said? The Bible says that if you have been quickened, if the spirit of God dwells in you, and I pray that that's true of you. I pray that every one of you listeners or viewers right now knows Jesus Christ as his personal savior. I pray that your experience is that the Spirit of God dwells in you. And if that be true, then what do you already know? You know that you have been declared righteous. And the very righteousness of God is your righteousness. And one day it will be revealed in demonstrable ways in your life. And one of those ways here in verse number 11 is that one day he will quicken even your body. So God's plan of salvation is more than just a declaration of righteousness at the moment that you receive Christ. That's justification. But God's plan includes what he's doing in your life today and the process that we call sanctification. And God's plan includes 
the finality of your salvation, when your even your body will be made like unto his body, unto his glorious body. We see that in 1 John chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, that one day we will, we will be saved, spirit, soul, and body, complete salvation. I often say it this way, God wants to save all of us. He's not willing that any should perish. He's the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So he wants to save all of us, but, but, but watch this. He wants to save all of us. And I'm, I'm, if, you're, if you're listening right now, I'm just, I'm just referring to, to all of me. He wants to save all of who I am. Uh, my spirit, my soul, my body, it's complete salvation. So that's the scope of God's plan for all of mankind. Now, obviously, man can choose to reject him. And for you, that he wants to save you unto the uttermost. I love that. Look at verse number 11 again. So he that raised up Jesus or Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. So one day this body that is not saved, my body is not saved, but one day it will be saved and made like unto Jesus' body. I like what happened on the Mount of Transfiguration when Peter and James and John were taken up by the Lord and they saw a little presage of what glorified bodies will look like because they saw Jesus transfigured before them. But that transfiguration will be one day your transfiguration. That's the promise here of verse number 11. Look at verse number 12. Therefore, so based upon this wonderful and glorious truth, therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh, you owe sin nothing. You owe the desires and the the uh, priorities of your own life nothing. We are not debtors to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Watch this, verse 13. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. We already established that life was leading to death before we were saved. The wage of sin is death. Uh, to live after the flesh as a believer is to live in spiritual defeat. So the Bible says, for if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deed to the body, ye shall live. So to mortify means to reckon them to be dead. So you see both the positional aspect of this and the practical aspect of this. That yet in a positional sense, my status is I'm righteous. God sees the very righteousness of Jesus in me. That's my status. But what is my practical condition? Well, I live in the nasty now and now. And while I have the Spirit of God in me, who wants to use the Word of God to make me more like Jesus, and I need to listen to a still small voice and become more like Jesus day by day in this process of being set apart, being sanctified, we, what what do I find? I find that that old man that's dead, boy, the vestige of him and the imprint of him upon my flesh just comes back and I need to learn to mortify. This goes back to chapter six, doesn't it? I need to realize I am dead to those things. So I need to reckon that to be so. Activate that truth in my mind on a regular daily basis so that I can mortify, therefore, the deeds of the flesh. That's what Paul talked about in Colossians chapter 3. And seek those things that are above to set my affection on things above. What does this all teach us? It teaches us that the Christian life really is a matter of getting our thinking straight every single day. Getting our thinking straight. Who am I? In Christ, what has he called me to do? What are the resources that I have already in the spirit of God and in the victory that he has promised me? And let let my mind get oriented to that every single day. Look, if you would, at verse number 12 again. So brethren, remember he's speaking to believers, we're debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh, because if we live after the flesh, we're going to die. But if we, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Boy, that's what true life is. Not just eternal life, but the abundant life of Christ 
is living the life of yielding to the Spirit of God. We'll stop there for today. We'll jump right back into verse number 14 next episode. Join us for that if you would. God bless you, my friends.